Hello, welcome back. Uh, you've got me, Natasha McCarthy, this hour, and it is time for our block of the month. This is something we've been asked for from the very, very beginning when we first started the channel. Uh, you asked us, could you do a block of the month? And it was only when we got lovely Jane on board. Well, actually, yes, let's make this reality. And so we have. So the way that it works is each month, Jane will come on and bring another block. The end quilt will look a little something like this, obviously in fabric. But this is the design idea. So there are 10 different blocks. Then you'll do a month of sashing and binding, and then you'll do a month of quilting. And, and that then, at the end of your year, you have got a gorgeous quilt, like a quilt along type thing. So the very first block was, of course, your nine patch. And so you've got all of those and your sashing fabric. So if you've done that already, great, well done, you've done your homework. And then you'll have your fabric to put to one side for your sashings for month 11. Today's block is, put, 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 that one I want to say, that one, yes. And so this is the yellow one here. Here we go. So you're getting in here three fat quarters and thread. It's just 10.99. Join everybody that's doing this. So you've got a fat quarter of sunshine, fat quarter of gold, fat quarter of ivory, your instructions and your thread. So let's show you how big that is. Now you see happy colors. According to Hannah, our last guest, you know, if you like your oranges and your golds and happy, happy colours. That is your fat quarter. So you're getting three of those sized pieces of fabric, 10.99, AYXC23. Very busy for this already. So if you if there is if you are experiencing a little queue on our phone lines, don't, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We will get to you. Just shortly, just keep on watching, you'll be all right. If you have mixed, uh, mixed, missed any of the previous ones, then let me show you. This was the second block, was the green, this one here. There we are, that one. And again, step by step, this is going to build up your skill level as well. It might be that you've only got time to do a block a month. In which case, $9.99 for your sampler block. Okay, so again, your instructions... And you're also going to get, you can watch back the shows as well, fat quarter of ivory, fat quarter of lime, and your thread. Whoop. There we go. And of course, your instructions as well. So you're going to have a lovely library of blocks that, of course, you could in between time whiz up a, a little quilt or some matching cushions or whatever if you've got a favorite block. And then the very, very first one that we did, now remember, you're going to make your nine patch blocks. I think there were six, there's 16 of those. Yes, yeah, 16 of those and your sashing. So you then put the rest of this away for your sashing for month 11. Don't use it up in the meantime. So a meter and a half here of your cream, a meter of your blue, a half meter of your coban, co cobalt rather, and then your thread and your instructions. Fabulous. Now, the lady behind it, the very lovely Jane Alcock. Hello. Hello. So very good to have you on and the show. Thank you, you very Thank much. You. Drag you out of the office and into here, <laughs> into our magical world here. It's the lovely world of the studio, yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Now, this is something we've been asked for for a long time, so it's lovely that you could make this happen. You've done these for many years, haven't you? Yes, it's something that we've done quite often in the shop. It's a good way of, of building up people's skill levels. You know, you start with your basic cutting, cutting squares, and we move on to half square triangles. And this month we're doing three quarter, well, I call them three quarter square triangles. I don't think that's the proper way of the three triangle units. It's not a mathematical It's not a three quarter, term. really. Yeah, but, but we know what you mean. Yes. Yes. So yeah. the block is called spinning wheels. 
or pinwheel. And it's made up of the, the three triangle unit, which is, is that unit there. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to make that unit. Brilliant. Okay. So it's, it's like all the, the, the blocks I start with, all the units I start with, we start with squares. And we'll just do a little bit of a um, update on cutting squares, cutting from your, your fat quarter piece. Because your fat quarter only has one salvage edge on it yes. and, a, and a cut edge. So the same way as we've done when we've had a half metre piece or, or an even bigger piece is we just bring the salvage up to that cut edge and just dangle it to make sure it's hanging straight and by looking at the fold at the bottom just so that we haven't got a twist in it. If I put the edges together, you can see there's a, a slight twist there. So we just slide that across until the twist disappears and it's hanging nice and straight. Mm -hmm. Lie that on the mat and just trim off, lining up that fold with one of the straight lines on the mat. We're just going to trim off this edge here just to straighten it up. And that's making sure that the shorter side goes over the line on the mat, just, just to take off the minimal amount, just to get a nice straight edge to measure against. It's neatening, isn't it? It's like taking the first slice off your loaf of bread because it's gone a bit stale, isn't it? You just, yeah, just, just neaten it up. up so you've got a, a nice starting point. I'm right-handed, so I started on the, on the right-hand side and then I'm going to flip it over to my left-hand side purely because I like to have um, most of my fabric under my ruler when I'm cutting. just gives it a little bit more stability. It feels safer, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Now, for this um, larger square of, of the three, um, I need to cut it at... Um, let me just double-check this. I need to cut it at um, six and seven-eighths. Is that right? Yes. So I'm going to line that up with the mat. Now, obviously, my ruler is, is not as wide. It's only six and a half. Right. So I'm Would going you to, like a bigger ruler? I'm going to use the mat oh, okay. to use as my cutting guide. Now, what, what I will say is if you use the mat, always use the mat. If you use a ruler, if you have a bigger ruler, always use the ruler, just because there can be, between the two, just a slight discrepancy. Okay. So we're keeping it accurate. So it doesn't matter which, but just be consistent in what yes. you do. Yeah. Okay. So we want six and seven eighths. So we've got the six line there, mm -hmm. and the seven eighth mark is just there before the seven. So you just have to come in. So you just have to come in bit. slightly. And you can um, use your ruler to line it up with that six line there, the seven eighth mark on your mm -hmm. ruler. What I always say with seven eighths is it can be a bit confusing, but if you go up to the next inch, so if you go up to seven and then just come back an eighth, yeah, that's, that's, a, little, way, that's a little bit easier to sort of remember it. Is so that... we cut a strip. Just move that fabric out of the way. Is there any fabric left over from this? You will have a little bit of fabric left over, particularly from your um, block of the month. So you'll, you'll be building up your stash as well at the same time. I'm going to straighten off the edge by taking the salvage off. Do you take the whole of the salvage off so you don't? Yeah. There's no point in scrimping and using that. No, you don't. You won't need it for anything. The salvage is also slightly thicker, isn't it? Where it's yes. been held Yeah, it's a, the, it's got, it's a denser and it yeah. doesn't move like the rest of the fabric either. So, you know, it's, you don't really want to keep it in, in with your fabric. Um, and then we're going to go seven eighths again, six and seven eighths again. So I've lined that up with the zero and I'm just putting the seven eighth mark of the ruler on that line. Right. So you lining know. it up and then going across. So I've actually cut two squares in one go there, which okay. is what I need. And that's, that's all you need for the whole block, isn't it? Yes. Oh, so you've got lots left over. Yes, you've got quite a bit left over. And then we need one um, seven and a quarter inch square of the cream, ivory, and one seven and a quarter square of the um, gold fabric. This is where um, the fact that you've done the maths for us is great. Yeah, we're working on 12 inch blocks, so yeah. um, it's made of a four, it's a four patch unit, so each unit needs to finish at six and a half to make that 12 and a half inch block that will then be um, uh, 12 inches finished right. for, the, for the quilt that we're making. 
Um, we're going to cut the um, six and seven eighths square in half across one of the diagonals. So we've got four half square triangles there now. Mm -hmm. Half the stock of the block's gone, Jane, already. Wow, it's, just, it's been very popular, the, the um, block of the month, which is lovely. Because, you know, you, you come up with an idea and you're never really sure whether it's going to... Yeah, if people were just being polite and yes, asking or if yeah. they actually wanted it. No, you did actually want it. Um, is this your whole design, this whole quilt? Yes, I've put the... I mean, they're, the they're blocks together. that are that are out there. They're not yeah, unique, no, but, but I pulled the concept of the, the different styles of blocks together and I tried to work it so that we would be working up a skill base. So, you know, aimed it at beginners, but then sort of thought about where we could go from there. This takes thought, Jane, and this is, if, if I had to describe you in any way, is that you are very kind and thoughtful. Thank you. And, um, and, and this, this is you, this is you in, in, a, in a quilting form. It's a kind, thoughtful way to get those who are beginning quilting, those who um, are already quilting, but kind of just needs a bit of community maybe to just give you a bit of encouragement yes, and, and yeah. maybe you've lost your mojo or those that are short on time, but who do want to create something. It ticks all those boxes and you get something beautiful at the end of it. There's a sense of community on our website, on our yes, fan page. Yeah. Um, uh, so I think it is a really lovely idea. So thank you. That's okay, that's lovely and it's a pleasure. Um, we're going to cut this square into four quarters. So we've got four triangles. Okay. I'm going to use the rotating cutting mat because do it's, it. it's, it's a little there bit it's it's, brilliant. It makes it a little safer. You can do it, and I will show you how to do it without the rotating cutting mat. But this mat, if you've got one, use it because it's just lovely. So cut it in half across the diagonal um, from point to point. Is this, no, this isn't the first time. So this is the second time now with the block of the month that we've been working, um, cutting through the bias. Yes. So should we be starching these? Best press. Best pressing. Yes, give it a good savvy, starch. Any of yeah, those. it just helps um, with this particular method. And I'm, I'm going to explain in a little while. Um, you can do this method by doing two squares, sewing down, um, I, marking the diagonal and sewing down either side. But with this particular block, it doesn't quite give you the pinwheel, and I'll explain that a bit later on, which is why I'm cutting each piece individually. Okay. Um, okay. I like quick piecing and um, easy. So if I can get away without having to cut biased pieces with biased edges, I do. So I like, I like two squares together, so down either side and trim away. Yeah. So just by rotating the mass, I was able to cut through the two diagonals there without having to adjust my body position or, or cut across. It's about being safe, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, and I think that, you know, for me, I can only talk from a personal point of view, that had put me off using rotary cutters. It turned out that actually the rotary cutter I had had a really blunt blade, so I didn't feel like I could cut. I wasn't very good yes. at it. I'd had a near miss with my finger and it, at it. But once you get the right tools for the job, don't be afraid anymore. And also starting at the skill level that suits you as well. That's yeah. Thing. I mean, when you're at home, you could, you've, you've probably got more space to manoeuvre and you can and do all sorts of things um, to help you cut. But we don't advocate cutting across ourselves and we certainly don't advocate cutting towards ourselves. So we're all always cutting as safely as possible. So if you don't have a rotating cutting mat, you can do the same thing. You can um, cut through the one diagonal. Now, what you can do if you don't want, if you haven't got the space, if you manoeuvre yourself to the side of your mat and place your ruler along that long edge there, you're still fully in control to cut across that way. Yes. Okay. But what I would do at home if, with my cutting mat is I would just simply turn the mat around. I would have to spend 10 minutes clearing the space well, to rotate it. Some of us crazy. don't have the room, but as I just said, you can, just by manoeuvring yourself slightly to the side of your mat, yeah. you can cut safely across. But if you've got the, posi the ability to turn your mat around, then that is the safest way it's of doing not, it. It's not the space, Jane, it's just that I find that nature abhors a vacuum. So it doesn't matter how much space I have, 
I believe. Yes, it is. It's, it's just one of those the things. law, isn't yeah. it, really? So we've got four quarter square triangles of, of the cream background okay. fabric, and we've got four quarter square triangles of the gold. We're going to place those. If you've got pattern fabric, you'd be placing them right sides together. Now you want them all the same way. So I'm going to place my gold on top of my background fabric okay. on all of them so that the, that's at the top. If I was, if it fell the other way, just as long as they're all the same. And again, this is quite important to get the, the spin pinwheel effect. So this is your consistency yet again. That seems to be the key word for this block. Yes. We're working with a quarter inch seam and we're going to sew down the one side. And again, we're going to sew down the same side on all of these. Okay. So it's just, you know, quarter of an inch. Take your time, let the machine do it. Don't pull it because we are still working with a biased edge. You can chain piece this. And if you start with the square end, so you you're consistently not, start in the same place too? Yes. Okay. You're not going to get that little tail of your um, triangle rooshing up and falling into the feed dogs, which then scrunches your fabric up. Uh, Joan in Gloucestershire, lots of people watching Gloucestershire this morning. Good morning to you. She says, hello, please can you give measurements of gold and ivory squares? So the the they gold were ivory. they started off life as seven and a quarter inch squares. That's it. You did say because that was when I sort of went. Well, thank you for doing the maths because I wouldn't remember that either. Yeah. So we've got the um, those cut in a nice row of bunting. Now I forgot to bring the little. Um, thread cutter because I love that little thread cutter. Oh wait, it just goes down and yes. Okay. So, we're just so you've got to go snip. for the old fashioned snip yeah, way. Yeah, we'll snip through with the scissors. We're going to press those open now and we're going to press them to the darker fabric. Would and again, like just that? take, yes please, just take care because when you press them down you've got two bias edges there so you want to just press literally. Okay. Bop it down with the... With Do the I still need to set the seam first? Yes please. Lovely. Is that okay? That's perfect. Are we happy? Oh, <laughs> and then comes in the pile. Yeah. So once we've got that um, unit, it becomes a half square triangle. So we're then going to place the larger half square triangle that we cut previously, right sides together along that, and we're going to sew down that edge there. So the block of the month, are we actually organized enough to do this on the same day each month does it fall on the same day yes, each we've, month? we've we've done it as a destination show it's called apparently destination hour so it's 10 o'clock on the 10th of each month 10 o'clock on the 10th. oh that's a nice way easy way to remember so yes, you can set your a... recorders and you can also go back and of course all of these shows will be on youtube if you've missed of course you can stock up on the previous bundles so you have got time to catch up yes i think it's lovely isn't it because we've got the youtube um programs we you know if you if you've just joined us and thought oh I'd like to have started having a go at that you can look back on on those shows so you'll be able to see me demonstrating it and get a bit more of an idea although you'll get the instruction sheet with this yes it's still sometimes better isn't it if you actually see somebody doing it no, as course. well it's that's that's my best way to learn if um can you let me know if you are doing, if you are of course long doing the block of the month, are you also doing one in your own colourways? So you get the instructions, you do that block. Have you then been inspired with any of them so far to then go and practice it a bit more? Or do you practice on other fabric before you do this? Um, how are you managing this at home? Are you enjoying it? Are you tempted to rush ahead? Or have you had a, a favourite one? Because we're on We've done three blocks now. Yes, yeah, so third, the third block. block yeah. um, so have you then followed through and, and done some more on on other quilts and things? That's what I'd like to know. So 
So we've got four. And that's our, our unit made. So we've got four of those and we'll press those again and again, just taking care not to push it too much because um, it will, we've got a bias edge and it's quite a large piece. So the bias is even stretchier, I always find. The bigger the piece, the bigger the um, bias on it. And actually you can, as you've chain pieced everything else, you can just chain piece these, can't you? Chain, yes. chain iron. Yeah. So we're going to put the four blocks together now to create the, um, the spinning wheel effect. It's a bit like a windmill, isn't it, really? Um, um, is it, children have them and stick them in sort of flower pots and yes, things, don't yeah. they? And we're going to join two of the squares together and we're actually joining them exactly the same way, the two pairs, in exactly the same way because when we've joined that together and we turn it around, ah, it makes the, the pinwheel. But the other thing you can do with this block is you could, you could um, do alternate colourways with one of your, two of your half square triangles. So you could bring those into the middle and you could do that with your block. And then when you put those blocks together, you will, in effect, create another pattern here. That's the beauty of the, the pinwheel, isn't it? Yeah. And you can really play with your colour and your pattern. And when you put, like, you put two blocks together, you get that effect. But when you put a row of them together, you're going to get another pinwheel going on there. in this square here. So you can have... This block isn't as versatile as some of the other blocks that we do, but there's still an alternative setting yeah. so you can get another effect so you know you could either leave it in the same color way or i think you know if you if you did an alternate color way here in your opposite color again you'll get another, another pattern look, going on and that's what i mean when i say that have you learned how to do these blocks with jane and then gone off and and tried them in different colorways and you know different patterns and things like that because the other nice thing about this is actually these are in plain fabric so you haven't had to worry about right sides together or yeah. fussy cutting or anything like that but that is a way that you can once you've got your instructions and you've done this block then you can go on and and have a good go and get different effects that's right so when we join the blocks together we can actually nestle the seams because the two half square triangles actually face ah, opposite to each okay. other. So this again helps with the lining up of your units and helps with that little point in the middle because we all get a little bit worried that our points don't meet in the middle. Right. But um, nestling seams certainly helps with that aspect of things. It also helps you to know that you've got your pieces in the right way as well, because it would be very easy to turn it upside down. Because <laughs> we all We're know how the little sewing machine, sewing room imp likes to turn your squares upside down as you get to the machine. It is the craziest of things, isn't it? I, I don't know quite how that happens, and yet it does. Yeah. I mean, you can pin if, if you're if you feel more comfortable pinning, then then do you know whatever. If, you, if it, it makes life easier for you, then do it that way. And what I would suggest is that when you press this seam um, to one side, that you press it to the side of the larger triangle, just because you haven't got any seams to, to press over and it, and it prefers to lie that way. Okay, I can do that. And as I say, we've done those exactly the same way, but by turning that around now, ah, it gives you the pinwheel effect. Fabulous. And we've also got one seam going that way and one seam going that way. So again, when we come to place those together, we've got that nestling seam effect. And just a little sort of like added bit, if you place your pin through, you can see where that stitch line and that stitch line come together. That's yeah. the point of your triangle. If you place that, pin through there 
and place it through the point on the opposite side, yeah. you're going to be doubly sure that you're going to get that point matching. Is that nice? You see, I said to Charlotte, and she looked a bit, she looked at me a bit funny when I said, "Is that when you when you wiggle your?" Yes. Need your your pin, but if you wiggle your pin, it makes the fabric then line. Yes, it will line it up. So and that was sort of can, what I meant. Yeah, you can place your pin in, and then place the other one there, and then you can sort of dangle them so that they yeah they'll sit against each other then, so that your pin is going straight through your fabric and yeah. not dipped down or or dipped up. When I said this to her, she twerked for me, which you know was a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She wiggled at me, so she wiggled. Okay. Uh, you've, also, Sutherland. you've also got you, the sort of like X marks the spot. So when you come down, you want your seam to be just inside that little X part there that you can see. Oh, yes. So it's sort of, again, it's another sort of visual guide to make sure that you're, you don't lose your points. And this is going to give you perfect points. Flo in Sutherland says, great show. Is it usual to use steam to press the seams? No. Is the steam on on this? I didn't turn I, it on. It's oh, no, hang on. Someone's turned the steam on. That iron has a mind of its own, I think. I, I, prefer, really to use, I prefer to use um, a dry iron. I, I don't use steam, particularly if I've got biased edges that I'm sewing through as well, because the steam can help to stretch the fabric. So I personally prefer a dry iron. And I hadn't noticed at all. No. So there we it's go. Uh, Flo, not, you've you know, spot on. It's not the end of the world, and some some stitches will t will quilters will say no. I like steam. Okay. So you can oh, see perfect. there. Oh, perfect, Jane. You're We're pro. just a little bit out, but it's not. I'm not going to fuss about that. What I am going to do is I'm going to unpick those couple of stitches up to that steam seam line on both sides. Oh, I love these because you end up with a mini pinwheel on the other side. Yeah. And then when I press. I'm going to press that. Ooh. Now tell me if it steams this time, because I've no, I didn't realise it was behaving itself. Press that away, and then I'll flip it over, and we press one seam up and one seam down. And as Natasha just said, it forms a little pinwheel in the middle. And I then feel sad that you don't actually get to see that. It will it will lie flat. Mm -hmm. It's deciding it's not going to today, but you just have to just maneuver it slightly we can probably, two thirds of the block has gone now so I think well it's done a little bit better on that one it sort of gives you a little bit of a pinwheel yeah. on there um, block but one which is the sashing is down the bottom there so if you're just starting out it's very very limited but it's got three meters of fabric there 24.99 down there so i think we will if you have missed i think that we will each month try and make sure we've got some stock so that you can yeah um we're waiting for more stock to come in to make more of them but if you are going oh gosh this is a really lovely thing i want to be a part of it then do just top up and grab yourself your block of the month the reason that that is more is because you're getting more fabric because that has all your sashing it in as well the sashing borders yeah. in it as well so you'll yeah. make your 16 nine patch blocks which are smaller than these they're only six inch finished blocks um and you put those to one side and then in in, in month um 11 i'll go through with how we join all the blocks together with the sashing and the cornerstone square so we're trying to make it so that it's sort of like, like you said, a quilt along that yeah. people can feel involved with it and, and build up their skill level as we go. Um, I think it's a lovely idea. I'm also aware that, you know, there's a lot of ladies and gentlemen out there that already know this block and they're very familiar with it. So what I've tried to do each month is I've just tried to twist the block a little bit. So we've got a quilting project that uses um, the similar block or a, a variation of that block. Okay. So and that is over there, yes. which we are going to have a look at in just one moment. Um, should we go? I'll go and have a little recap. Okay. So that you can do whatever you need to do to prepare yourself, Jane. I've still got a hold of that. That's yours. Uh, okay. So block number three. Very very popular. Hundreds and hundreds of these are sold. I'm so pleased. That means that hundreds and hundreds of you are quilting along. That's a lovely thing. Getting the nation quilting. So this is your block of the month. And this is your sampler block number three. This is your pinwheel. 
you have got a uh, fat quarter of sunshine, fat quarter of gold, and a fat quarter of ivory. And a fat quarter of sunshine. That sounds Wait. wonderful, doesn't it? And your thread, because we're not assuming that you have anything there. And of course, your full instructions as well. Now, let's have a look what else we've got over here. Now, as Jane said, the twist is that we then provide a pattern for you if you love the block and you think, yes, 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 really want to make a whole one. Here we go. This is the quilt. Let's have a look at this. So this is in our, um, our Great British Sewing Colours. Spot on for this week, your Great British Sewing Colours. And here they are. So that you can make that quilt there. Now here we go. So you have got in here all these different colours. Your red, your blue, your grey and your cream. One metre of, oh, one metre of silver. One metre of cadet blue. One metre of ivory. And a half metre of your paprika, your thread and your full instructions there. Okay. I love how that's been quilted with the accent around the silver. It gives a whole new edge to it, doesn't it? Now, this is your apple one. So they've just been, they've, yeah, the top colour is what they've been named for. So you have got a metre, a metre, a metre and a half. So a metre of your navy, a metre of your slate, a metre of your pale blue and half a metre of your apple. And that's 35.99, your thread plus your instructions all winging their way to you should you choose that option. So what do we do here then, Jane? There's not much difference in this block. There's, there's not um, any like great cutting it up and changing it round or anything like that. It's still the same pinwheel block. All we've done is we've changed two of the colours. Mm. And by changing those two colours visually, when you look at it, your eye is, dances over it and sees a different pattern each time, yes. which is why we've called it spinning wheels, because yeah. it, you, you focus on the grey and then suddenly you, you pick up on the paprika and then the navy sh sit, shines out at you. So, and then sometimes you can eat, even the ivory creates the pinwheel. So constantly when you're looking at it, it sort of has a movement to it. They are, they, we have it's one amazing how pretty much can those colours yeah. in our garden spinning away when the dogs don't get hold of it and yeah. run off around the garden with it. I have to thank my friend Faith because she's made the sample for that one for me. Did she? Yeah, so how I was amazing. a bit thank behind you. and she's done that for um, me. So. We were admiring your quilting on that. I love yes, how... Yes, she's uh, done that beautifully. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do it with the apple colourway and um, I chose to have the sky blue as my background but okay. I was when I was making the sample up I thought you know that navy could look quite nice as, as the background fabric. Jane do you um, get a blank piece of paper sort of sketch this out and then do those colours to choose yeah, where you I want have things a, to a do? Sort of we're very lucky here because we've got all the samples and we've got all the sample cards and everything. So I've got all these colour palettes at my fingertips, if you like. So I get to have a play with lots of different colours and see how they play against each other and what works and what doesn't. And the paprika bundle has that zingy, like orangey red in it, which really pops out to me. And then I think this, this colour bundle is a little bit softer and a little more gentle. But, but I love that green. I think that if you use the navy as the background colour, and there's plenty of fabric to do that because you've got half a metre of, of the two, you might get quite a dramatic effect. It would be interesting to see how that plays out. So I'm hoping that somebody maybe does that way. <laughs> colour <laughs> have a look at it. Hint. Yeah. So the measurements are all in, in, the, um, in the pattern. We've got um, two squares of... Um, one square of the um, apple and one square of the um, background, which is the pale blue, mm -hmm. and one of the navy and one of the background, the sky blue. And they are cut at um, five and a quarter, those squares. And so those you can... Lay your quarter square layer up You could not. do, you could layer them up and cut them at the same time. 
you're letting yourself in for a bit of fabric movement, so it might be better to cut them individually. Okay. Okay. But they're the, 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 the pairs of bows. So you will have um, quite a lot of, of triangles cut. So you will have four of your um, background ones, four of your apple and four of your um, navy. You don't need to have one of each for each one. I'm going to show you the other, the other way of, of doing the pinwheel, which gives you a different effect. And then um, four and seven eighths, I think it is, of the, yes, of the slate, isn't it, this colour? Yes. Um, and we're going to cut those in half to get the half square triangles. That's an amazing um, grey, actually, because it blends so beautifully and, and actually real, ends up looking more like, like a petrol blue. blue, doesn't yeah. it? It's fascinating. Um, Carolyn Leicestershire says, Hi, lovely ladies. As a complete beginner, I am loving the block of the month. I haven't yet ventured into variations, but watch this space. Well Thank done, you for Carol. sharing, Carol. It's lovely. It's lovely, you know, to have... We've had lots of people who have maybe been dressmakers come across to quilting and then quilters go across to dressmaking. So I think the more you see, the more you immerse yourself in it with the channel, then, uh, you know, the more, the more you will be able to. And I like that this is happening on the 10th at 10 o'clock every, every month. month yeah. So you know. So destination hour, that's what we call it here in Telluland. Destination hour. It's nice because you can sort of, like you say, take, set your, your recorder for, for the same time every month and yeah. it'll keep it. So we're going to place one of the coloured um, quarter square triangles on top of the background square and we'll do the same as we did before. So a seam down each one of those to create um, half square triangles. triangles, which we will then pair with the half square triangle that we cut of the slate colour. It's exactly the same method. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you make your quarter square, square triangles, triangles, don't you, and then attach it to the, the half, half square, square triangle. triangle. So I'll just sew these two together. And again, if you are a new beginner, and if you want to, if you don't, well, I was going to say, if you, if you don't have a quarter of an inch foot, I have a guideline now, a, a guide on my quarter of an inch quarters foot, yeah. which I found really, really easy, and that has made me far more accurate because I don't wobble and weave around all over the place. But if you are looking at the top of that triangle thinking, oh gosh, where do I start? Just get your ruler, work down until, um, until your tip hits quarter of an inch and mark it. Yes. would be my, my tip for you, yes. so that you know exactly where you're starting. So what I mean by that, can I just borrow your yes. ruler a second? Because I did just see you start and I thought, oh gosh, actually, if we are talking absolute beginners, yep. you know, there is room for error, isn't there? Definitely, just in there. yes. Now with your of course, I've got the luxury here of being able to move my yeah. needle across and I know it's a quarter of an inch, so. But here, with your creative grids, of course, this side is going to mark your quarter of an inch. But where it comes down... And you can see Jane's spot on. Look, that is your quarter of an inch marker there. And we're, we're going to get this overhead. There we go. Yeah, so you can, see, just, been slid you can down. just mark that with your fabric marker. And then when you put it under your foot, you can see where you're starting. And look, that's exactly where Jane started. Because, you know, she's approached she's done this a few times. And I have the luxury of a machine that sets the quarter of an inch for me as well. Because you can get quarter of an inch feet for your machine. But when I started out, I didn't, no. I didn't have that. And actually, the quarter of an inch foot that I had, um, I've got, I've, like I say, I've got one now that has almost a guide, so I can butt it, and, and, and that's great. I don't over, yeah. oh, go over, and that's made a huge difference. Because I get distracted. Well, we all do, don't we? You Sometimes know, your mind wanders off while you're sewing. So again, we're placing the, the quarter square triangle side against the half square triangle side and that creates our spinning wheel. But this time we're taking one of the coloured one opposite, you know, two mm -hmm. different colours to create that, um, to create that block. And we do the same with that one. And again, we'll sew a quarter of an inch round and then when we turn that round, we've got it so that they're facing opposite mm -hmm. directions. And that creates, your, that creates your block, um, 
what you can do then is when you, when you come to sew your blocks together in rows, you can alternate the colour. So you can have the, the um, green or the paprika going one way and then have the um, blue or the, the navy or whichever colour you've chosen to have. Oh, then it really will so start then it to spins. move around. Or if you prefer, you can have it so that you've got all of the one colour going horizontally and all of the other colour going vertically. Again, you've got that option. Lay it out on, on your bed or your table if your table's big enough and have or a look yeah, and see which you got, prefer. If yeah. you've got, this is where the quilt wall, case quilt wall comes in as yes. an absolute treat because you can really take yeah, a step back. Wall, you, can you can squint a bit, take a photo of it, go away, yeah. come back, have a cup of tea in between and take a look and, and you really get a good idea. If you have the facility to take black and white photographs on your camera, on your camera phone, which I think we all do on our, these new smartphones, Take it in black and white, and that will give you the tonal value of your... And you can see then how the pattern is evolved. So that's a nice way of looking at it as well, through a, just taking all the colour out, and that gives you the tonal, and you can see. And sometimes that might even point out to you when you've mistakenly put one of the blocks the wrong way. Because that would happen. Because it yeah. happens. Yeah. We, will, we will do it, but it's a design feature rather than a fault. So the quick method of doing this block where you start with squares have we got time to do this yeah, yeah we've got loads of time so you would start with your quarter square triangles and you would mark your diagonal line through the middle and you would you will sew a quarter of an inch either side of the line now again Maybe if, if you are an absolute beginner, you might want to mark yeah, that quarter. Yeah, you can mark that well. quarter of an inch. So if you place your quarter of an inch mark on your ruler on that line, you can then draw another line either side of that line in the centre. And that gives you a sewing line to, Jane, to work on. Have you seen, I had it on my show the other day, the June Taylor half square and quarter square triangle maker? No. So on it... She's got the line where you line up the you know, the centre like that. Yes. And then she's got a groove either side that you just slot your pen in oh, and just mark it. Brilliant oh. idea. And then you move it across to the other side of the mat where you would then just cut. You'd line up your uh, quarter inch either side and then just cut straight through the middle. Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. There's, there's a gadget out sound. there for everything. Well, yeah, but if you are worried about being a bit wobbly, then there are gadgets and gizmos out there. Look for our June Taylor half square and quarter square triangle rulers on our website because there's a wealth of goodies on our um, on our website. Yeah, we've got all sorts of gadgets, haven't we, yeah. to help us? And it, you know, you know, if you could, if you've got something that works for you and helps you to create the the units that you want, then. Mm -hmm. we've, we've all, um, There's no point if you're going to worry and there is something out there that might help you, treat yourself, you know, make it an enjoyable experience. Uh, we've had a lovely email apparently, whilst you just say that. Uh, so this is from Helen in Barnsley. She says, I'm so excited, it's block of the month time again. I've wanted to try a quilt for a long time but was quite daunted. I, no, I get that. This has been the perfect amount each month to be able to keep up, especially with a cheeky eight month old to entertain at the same time. I salute you. Busy mama, I salute you. Yeah. Um, I have a massive fabric stash that I have been using. It will be very scrappy by the end with lots of design choices. I have loved watching and learning during my maternity leave. Helen, I'm, I'm with you there. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. Thank you for sharing that because it is, um, it is a manageable chunk. Yes. And I also love that your quilt is going to be like ours but slightly different. Yeah. And I think even people that are, are quilting along with the same block, doing the same, same block each time, when it comes to, to laying the blocks out into, their, into the quilt, you don't have to follow my layout completely. You can put your blocks where you like. So again, you might have the same block, but your quilt will look different because mm. you've placed it in a different position or a different way. So no, it'll enough. be, you know, made your own. So we've created, we've, we've cut through that, that drawn line now uh -huh. we've created half square triangles so we're going to press um those in half i think also any any mother of an eight month old that's managing to do anything i salute you yes definitely <laughs> <laughs> you 
Getting out of the house is even a challenge some oh, days, isn't sorry it? Sorry about it, yeah. So that's that one. And then we've got here, we've got the two um, half square triangle squares. And we're going to, again, place, uh, draw a line through the diagonal from corner to corner. And we're going to place this time, we're going to place that square with the um, drawn line facing, running in the opposite direction to the seam line. Hang on, so, hang on, what, 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 that's so just that's, going over there? That diagonal there is running in the opposite direction. So when we sew it, it will create the unit. And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch either side. This is a... Cheeky method, Jane. Yes, there is a little downside, and we're going to we, we will we will show that in a moment. This is brilliant. So you just go up one side, down the next, down the other, just like you do when you're making half square triangles. And we'll do it with the same with this other one. This is brilliant. Right. Okay, and then we're going to cut along that marked line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's time for a new blade. Do you want that? <clears throat> yes, please. To the dark side again? Yes, please. see the downside right now so that's made your three to quarter square triangle unit brilliant. without any bias edges brilliant but you'll notice that the triangles are on opposite sides does that matter if you've made it it enough? doesn't matter if you've made um, if you've made four, if you've made four of them, but what will happen when you put your um, triangles together, mm -hmm. you will have your Careful, your pinwheel go rotating in opposite directions. I quite like that. It's nice because it, you can again, when you put them together, it gives it even more of a, yeah. a dancing effect. But that's why, if you were doing it with the um, easy with method, that, yeah you would have to make twice as many blocks okay. because one block would, would spin so anti-clockwise and the other would spin clockwise. You can get that effect there, but your triangles face don't spin because if you wanted your triangles to oh. spin. Yes, I see. And again, you know, you've created a different design. Give it a go and see what happens. Well, there are lots of, There's lots lots of ways. Of ways. Of but that's, oh. that's the way of creating three quarter square triangles without worrying about biased edges. But you mm -hmm. do have to be aware that you won't get, you'd have to make another set yes. to get one block yes. going one way. Yes. And the other block will spin in the opposite direction. Oh, fabulous. I see you what you mean. See. Yes, no, I'm with you. I get it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Wilma in Hertfordshire says, loving the programme, girls. Also, love Jane's bee pendant. Yeah, I commented on that this morning. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, please, where did you get it? Did I you? bought it in Poland, to be honest. Oh, did you? Okay, so um, not just I went trip to down Poland for my significant birthday, and my mum gave me some birthday money, and I used it to buy the pendant. Beautiful. What a lovely reminder. Yeah. Lovely. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That's, that's this month's block.
All done. Hooray! Yay. Thank you so much. What is next month's block? Next month's block, we're going to work on quarter square triangle blocks, okay. units, and we're going to create an Ohio star block. An Ohio star? Yes. Mm. Um, a customer who shall remain nameless, we've obviously clicked the anonymity box, uh, says, I'm making the quilt using some of your fabric and some from my stash. That's nice, you know, we all yes. have stash, yes. bring yes. it in. Yes. Would you recommend I wash fabrics first or the great washing debate? Some of mine has been. Thank you. I don't wash fabric. I don't do it because I just like to get on and sew. If you so, have washed part of it, though, probably wash the rest of it because it's is that going, consistency it's, yeah isn't it? it might play differently and um, if you've got a strong color like a, a red or um, a black it might be an idea to wash it first or just to give it um what we call the the, the q-tip test which is a cotton bud dipped in water and, and just run across the top of oh, it good, and yeah. if the dye is going to come out it'll come out Moment. on that i remember having this debate with um with jennifer taylor and, yes. uh, and had announced it to the world, I don't wash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've said that before now. And I'm like, no, no, I do fabric. wash. Fabric. But I don't wash fabric. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. Obviously, if you're dressmaking, we would always recommend washing. Yes, I think all of for your dressmakers, fabrics it's different. Situation. It is because you don't want to make it and then have to go on a diet to fit into no, once that's it's. That's right. Yeah, we've I all think had for those. quilting, if you, don't, if you don't wash it beforehand and you make your quilt, and then if you do wash your quilt as soon as you've made it, and it shrinks slightly. I think it gives it quite a nice sort of textured like feel. That, it gives yeah. it that little antique feel. But with the with the um, waddings that we have now, with the combination of polyester and cotton, they tend not to shrink so much anyway. So mm. you know, you you're not in a sticky situation. So yeah, it's very it's in a very emotive subject whether you wash fabric first or not. I don't. <laughs> I think there is no right answer. It comes down to personal choice. It does. And it's a definitely. Yeah. It's one of those, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, have you got your block of the month? Are you going for the? We call it the quilt of the month. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Then who knows? But Jane, thank you ever so much. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Mwah! Good thank to see you. you. Thank you. Right. Let's go and have a look then at what we've got over here. So our block of the month. No, okay, so the one, the, well, the quilt of the month then, I should say, in the paprika, or oh, the one that we've just been demoing, so the apple one, this one, half a metre of your apple, one metre of powder blue, one metre of, of slate, and a metre of navy, so three and a half metres of fabric, 30, uh, 35 99 you also get your thread and your instructions. Right, the one that we've got up on the wall, which are kind of the right colours for the Great British Sewing Week that we've got here. You have got half a metre of your paprika. Uh, then, is this the most popular colourway? Uh, a metre of your cadet blue, a metre of silver and a metre of your ivory, plus your thread, plus full instructions. Get going and have a go. What a great way to start out your quilting. And you would achieve Something like that, if you choose to do it like that. Or you might customise it, or you might do it the way that Jane's just explained and do alternating blocks. It's entirely up to you. This is the beauty of quilting, isn't it? I love how that's been quilted in the grey, uh, highlighting that. I think that's fabulous. And block of the month, our block of the month. And of course then, once you've done it, You've got, you've got stash, haven't you? Because you don't use up all of that fabric. So a fat quarter of each of these, a fat quarter in sunshine, a fat quarter in gold, and a fat quarter in, what was that one? It's ivory. Uh, and then you've got your thread, and also, of course, your instructions for the block of the month. Hundreds and hundreds of these have gone. Hundreds and hundreds. Lots of you quilting along, which is fabulous. Now, let's have a look at some of the previous blocks. So if you've joined us today and gone, this is a great idea, I want to join in, here's how you do so. Um, you go back to last month and it will be the 10 o'clock show on the 10th last month. Go onto YouTube, watch back the show to find out how you do block number two. And that's 9.99. That is your kit. And that is your friendship star. So that is, yeah, that's there for you. 9.99 there. RTXC32. 
fat cord of lime, fat cord of ivory, your thread, your instructions, off you go. And then if you want block number one, which are all the cornerstones of the quilt and your sashing. So part of it you'll use month one, part of it you will then put away until month 11 when we do the, sta the sashing. But of course it's the same colourway, so of course we had to, you know, put it all out there together. That is £24.99. You are getting three metres of fabric there and there. Now we have less than 20 of those left. Uh, we will be getting more of those back in the future so don't not make it because you haven't got that yet we will each month bring a certain amount of those to air for anybody that's catching up or you know hadn't been paid in time or whatever or who's only just found out about it and you know playing catch up or didn't have time that month miss the show whatever your excuse we'll always bring that on the 10 o'clock hour on the 10th of the month thank you very much we'll be back in just a couple of minutes 